Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our webinar here today. So the topic of today's webinar is the second in our six part uh, webinar series on Zebra Data Services. This is around enabling enterprise asset intelligence in the supply chain, simplifying access to data and business insights. So today we have a great panel again. So we have uh, myself, uh, Mia RPM for Intelligent Edge Solutions. Then we've got Dan Quigliana, who's the Global Zebra Data Services Product Lead uh, for, for Zebra. And then we've got Ben Horgan, who's Director of Software Engineering. So before we uh, get into the presentation, just a reminder, if you can pop your questions into the GoToWebinar tab on the right of your screen, uh, pop them in at any time and we'll uh, stop at various stages to uh, go through those questions with the panel. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to Ben. Uh, thank you, Alex. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, just to, to, as we dive into this presentation, give you a little uh, overview. Um, uh, as Alex said, my name is Ben Horgan. I'm a software engineer uh, over here in Minnesota, USA. Uh, looking forward to introducing to you guys a product I've been working on uh, with a, with the team over the last, um, it's got to be 18 months now, uh, that have been working on the Zebra Data Services platform. One of the reasons why we embarked on that is we have world-class uh, printers and barcode scanners, uh, meaning it, you know, very easy to get uh, or to create a label or to scan a barcode and get those uh, digits or to get that data into your application. But there's really... Uh, it, an application's use goes far beyond uh, just that uh, barcode scan itself. It's really turning that data, that uh, that the product representation or that UDI uh, values into something that you can take actionable insights with. So uh, the examples that we have up here on the screen, such as active ingredients or replacing pacemakers, are some of the problems that we've seen in the market over the years. Uh, with pacemakers, for instance, they have a life. You know, they have a battery. Uh, life inside them, and, and once you install them in a patient, of course, uh, explanting them or pulling them out is certainly a bigger deal. So you want to make sure you get the maximum time uh, life out of that pacemaker. That means you need to get it in in a particular date. You know, it ships and closed uh, with the battery running, and if you don't get it in a patient within a certain amount of time, you need to uh, dispose of that pacemaker and not put it to use. Uh, one of the studies they found a few years ago when they had to explant a large number of pacemakers and replace them in patients, they did a root cause analysis and they found that a lot of those pacemakers were installed post their last install date, meaning that they went in too late into the patient and so the patient had to endure an explant and replacement surgery early. Uh, had uh, that application been able to, when it recorded the barcode, the serial number that was put in uh, as the uh, pacemaker was being installed, had that number been uh, translated in the application and that uh, date, which is clearly on the label, the application or uh, could have gotten a beep or the cloud registration of that pacemaker could have uh, caused an email alert. There could have been additional warnings. You know, it's not just about collecting uh, the serial number or reporting it into a system of record, but really being able to turn that barcode into something that has real meaning in it. Same with active ingredients. You know, you can scan uh, a product as you're stocking a shelf that could have an active recall in it or could have an ingredient that there's an active recall on. Again, it gives an opportunity uh, for that frontline um, user, that, that, that frontline person to take more action than just scanning a barcode, recording that it was put on a shelf, doing a cycle count uh, of all the products and then skipping over one that shouldn't be on the shelf anymore. So it gives you an opportunity to use some of our data sources to help uh, build more insights into your applications. Um, this is a little bit different uh, for Zebra. I think many of you have done uh, business, thanks for that, Alex. Uh, many of you have done business with uh, Zebra, uh, buying products that you can ship right out of a box, uh, you know, a printer, a barcode scanner, a mobile computer. Uh, data services is a fully online uh, experience. You can go to our developer portal, uh, you can get your API key and you can start uh, developing at any time. No, no products need to arrive in a box. So this might be a little bit different than you're used to interacting with Zebra, uh, but we want to take the products that we've already made and help you put them to use uh, in new uh, and more effective ways without having to track down your own data sources yourself. So examples of meaning behind the barcode, uh, as you saw there, would be um, uh, something like a FedEx tracking number, 
uh, which, you know, so you, you now start talking about what is, uh, what is it that I just scanned? Is it a, a track, is it a package? Uh, where is it going to? Uh, is it on time or is it running behind? Uh, a UDI device that we just talked about there, uh, whether it be a stint as an example on the screen or a pacemaker that we just reviewed. Um, what's being installed? Is there any problem with it? Uh, and can you, uh, do you need to display more information? I mean, something as easy as uh, displaying something on the screen, like an image. So when you uh, pull information about that product, you can also pull the image with that product and you can display that on the screen. So someone, a frontline worker can look at that and say, wow, I just scanned what's supposed to be a stint, uh, but this really looks like a pacemaker. And then they can connect that and say something must not uh, be correct here. Uh, or maybe even uh, something like looking up a book or basic product identification. So our objective here is really threefold, uh, to help you identify what that barcode is. So using one of our APIs, you can throw any symbology uh, and the barcode at it, and it will take uh, some analytics, put some analytics behind it and come back with possible meanings behind that. So it's to identify that barcode. Is it a shipping label? Is it a medical device? Is it a book? Uh, then it's to uh, also, I, uh, to and uh, decode the information. Some barcodes have uh, several pieces of information in it. UDI is a great example. It may have a product identifier and a, a product creation date. So we'd be able to decode and pull some of that information that's already in the barcode there. We've identified what it is. It's a UDI device. We've decoded it. We've pulled the two fields and the three fields that are in the barcode out, but then we can enrich it. So taking that uh, product identification number, we can then uh, uh, enrich that UDI information to tell you exactly uh, what that device is and if it has anything, any other properties about it or information such as its creation date or its uh, installed by date. Uh, you wanna go to the next slide? So the challenge again that we're addressing is really to help you be able to take those, those raw digits uh, and this can be true even in the RFID uh, space where you're taking a uh, a EPC value that has quite a bit of information in it, you're decoding it. Uh, now you may have a product serial number, but you don't, or a product uh, identification number, but you don't really know what that product is. So that's where we're taking it, we're, we're identifying it, we're decoding it, and then we can throw it against our numerous data sources to enrich it. Some of those data sources you can see listed there on the right, uh, things like product identification, unique device identifiers, vehicles, uh, shipping carriers, and then adding additional information such as recall databases. We're always looking to expand our data sources. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out uh, to those at Zebra, at my, uh, to myself or Dan, who will be speaking in here just a little bit. Uh, if you've got other data sources you're aware of uh, that you'd really like to see incorporated into our enrichment engine. So the enrichment is really being able to pull from all of these data sources and stitch together uh, that meaning behind the barcode. Uh, we want to go to the next slide and we'll start looking. Alex, if you don't mind, thank you so much. So here as we build out the slide, you can kind of see uh, really what we're trying to get at from a single API. So uh, you can just, giving the symbology and the barcode itself, be able to throw it against our barcode intelligence API, which is really created of two. One where you can throw it just the type and it'll give you, this is a shipping tracking number. Uh, or this is a, um, a UPC value, uh, or you can take it down to some of our more uh, finite uh, data sources. So you can call directly against the FDA recall system. You can do a UPC lookup uh, or an EAN lookup directly against a product database. Uh, or if you know it's a vehicle, you can do a VIN finder uh, and look up more information about the vehicle. So you can really take the all at one approach, uh, such as the simple barcode intelligence API and throw something in or if you know the root of your data sources, you've got an opportunity then to call directly against that data source. And each one of those uh, you are, those APIs you can find at developer.zebra.com under the uh, Zebra Savannah Data Services platform. Uh, to see exactly what that would look like, uh, this would be an example of an API that you would get. So if you were to throw a UPC lookup out there, we're looking at uh, EAN value, you can see there ending 8013. Our system will go out and pull out quite a bit of information, such as that it's uh, Motrin drops for pain relief. Uh, it tells you the color, size, obviously dimension, but then it goes down and can give you more information, such as where, uh, places that it would be available, along with product images. All of these APIs, you can use um, you know, basic postman collection, 
Uh, we do have a, a convenience layer uh, uh, APIs available at uh, github.com slash zebra. Uh, so if you, already, if you have a favorite language such as Java or C Sharp, which is strongly typed, uh, those libraries come with fully hydrated objects, so it's easier to deserialize and consume it right in your application code. We also have it available in JavaScript and Python. All four have data models created. Obviously, deserializing data can be uh, more complex in strongly typed languages like C Sharp and Java uh, than it is in Python and JavaScript. But all four are there with example apps. So if you want to start using the APIs right away and need to get a kickstart on it, you're welcome to use those. Uh, on the dev portal, they're also displayed uh, using the open API spec or swag, uh, swag, swaggers. Um, so you can try it right there interactively on the dev portal. You can just plug in your UPC. Uh, you do need an API code uh, or an API key, uh, which you can also get on the dev portal, which is self-service. Uh, you would just uh, purchase a package. We do have free packages available uh, or ones that are available at a monthly subscription at a higher band rate, uh, bandwidth. So you can uh, call it more times per day and you can call it more rapidly. So depending on the size and scope of your application, you can find the package that works for you. Uh, I think I've got one more slide here. Oh, you know, that has reached the part of the technical uh, information. I think I'll pass it over to Dan, who uh, does a lot of the product development for us. Dan? Excellent. Thanks so much, Ben. Um, so I think Ben did a fantastic job of walking through things. Uh, I did want to recap a little bit. So Ben talked about some of the resources that we have available. Um, he mentioned on the developer portal at developer.zebra.com where users can go and they can see our barcode intelligence APIs and some of the data sources behind, behind them. He also mentioned at github.com slash zebra where you can go and you can see some of the sample code that uh, his team has put together in multiple languages. So um, I know we we talk a lot about the developer portal and we really want to make sure that uh, we highlight again the, the sample code that his team put together. That's something that I think we just put out about three weeks ago. So it's something newer and we're excited to have that out in the market. Um, so you know, just kind of to recap, I, I know a lot of folks have heard about Zebra Savannah and Zebra Data Services. And Zebra Savannah is um, Zebra's enterprise platform we're using to cloud enable our portfolio. And a lot of our APIs and the data services, which are kind of the outbound part, um, what we're offering up to our partner community, a lot of those are device dependent with that data coming through. Um, and barcode intelligence is one of those that it really is device independent, although it's tied in really nicely as Ben was describing with our mobile computers. So the data that gets scanned, what you're pulling in from that barcode. So in this, uh, this image, you, know, you have that shipping label on a box, you scan that, you're gonna find some, you potentially could find some tracking information or an EAN code. And by pulling in and calling this barcode intelligence API, we're able to look that information up. We're able to uh, not just provide that alphanumeric code that's within that barcode and the symbology that's there, but a lot of that meaning behind it so you can trigger that next best action. So some examples of what we've seen people using this for would include um, maybe in a in the warehouse space, we have some companies where, as Ben said, they're pulling in graphical imagery so that you can see what that product is, what it looks like. Uh, also looking at some of the dimensions and weight. So one of our companies, they're trying to look at their worker safety. So if there's a package that's over a certain weight, 35, 50 pounds, they're able to flag that and caution them and give warnings around how to properly lift a package that's over that weight. Um, ben talked a good amount about recall information, which is a huge piece, something that's really been resonating um, with our customers, where you know even if, if you're in a warehouse and if you're in a healthcare facility, if you're uh, focused on food, um, that recall database is looking at identifying some of the uh, those products that you either would not want to accept or you would not want to be sending out. Um, so some of the value that we have there. But overall, as we see the data flowing in to Zebra Savannah, and then we expose that data out through the APIs here, and this is something um, Zebra ourselves are using 
as our own platform. So how can we cloud connect our devices as we are building some of our solutions, uh, like LifeGuard over the air, uh, things like Printer Profile Manager Enterprise as we're cloud enabling those solutions. Those are all built, being built off of Savannah and we're taking an API first approach in terms of how we are building those uh, a lot of the, these products. So as we build our own products, we're having these building blocks that we're working off of so that we can then start thinking, how can we expose some of these the same data and these building blocks that we're using for our own development out to our partner community? And that was kind of the impetus for a lot of uh, some of these offerings that we have today, things that we'd been experimenting with that we'd been hearing a lot of our customers and partners uh, really needing help with. Um, so, you know, now we're going to look at our overall portfolio that we're going to focus in on. So Ben's been able to dive in deeply on barcode intelligence for us. Um, but just to give a, a little broader overview, um, on the left hand side, we have uh, APIs that are device oriented, uh, kind of reliant on Zebra devices. And the ones on the right hand side are more device independent. So looking at these, if we start at the top left, we have device health. and we actually should have tweaked this slide because just last week we were able to release our mobile computer device health APIs. So those are still, they're not publicly viewable because this was kind of our first phase and we're working on expanding out that portfolio. Uh, but what we have available in that, we have um, 11 different APIs that are pulling data from 250 data points on Zebra's Android mobile computers. So we have uh, three different areas focused around application usage, um, application not responding, the installed applications. We have three APIs focused around the battery. What are different events going on with that battery, charging, discharging? What is the status of the batteries? How, you know, how full is it? And how many times has it been charged? And then we have a predictive API around battery health. When is the expected end of life for that battery? And then lastly, in our mobile computer device health, uh, we have things just more focused on the device. So information around it, what is the model name, the operating system level, uh, serial number, you know, a host of information about that device, the types of radios that are in it, um, disruption, how much it's been used, different information like that. So if that's something of interest, we'd uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, send us a note in the uh, the question window. We can follow up with you on that, or shoot myself or Alex an email so we can follow up. We're also working on providing some of that same type of information on the printer side. Uh, for RFID, this is one that uh, we're really excited about because. Um, we've had a proof of concept out in the market for about a year that we've had a dozen or so companies test with. Um, and what we're able to do when you have a fixed reader today, uh, you need an on-site server to be able to take all the tag data that's coming through, be able to record that, process it, uh, and then pull that uh, information and the actions into your application. What we're able to do with this new feature that we're building it with the RFID uh, team at Zebra is we are having the RFID reader able to connect directly to our Savannah cloud. Um, that then allows you to have device management of that reader and all of your readers. It also makes it so that we now have pushed down some filtering of the tag data onto that reader so that um, we're sending events up to the cloud and that removes that need for on-site servers and this dramatically decreases the cost upfront cost of a fixed rfid reader deployment so this is something that you know we've been hearing very positive feedback from the market on changing some of those kind of return on investment dynamics uh, with rfid and we've been able to see some growth in terms of rfid through this um, so again, if you're interested in that, please let us know through the question window. We also are able to do, uh, uh, we're working on a printing API that allows you to send not just print jobs, but configuration files, graphics, fonts, et cetera, down to the printer uh, that we're working on for an upcoming release this quarter. Um, and LifeGuard, I think many of you are probably familiar with our Zebra's Android LifeGuard um, 
offering. And what we're able to do through Savannah is host those operating system updates so that we can then distribute those out um, through EMM partners uh, so that they can have, uh, you know, kind of manage the download and distribution of operating system updates. In terms of our kind of device independent APIs, we have our barcode generator. This is uh, the, an API where you feed data in, you select from amongst 103 different barcode types, and the API generates a graphical image of that barcode that you can then use to deploy within your application or on a web page. Um, so Zebra has a very strong breadth of barcodes in our portfolio, and we're able to leverage that and have uh, the, the kind of broadest portfolio uh, of any API in this space through that. Um, again, you can find all of these at our developer portal, developer.zebra.com. And Ben did a great job walking through barcode intelligence. And then our last one is blockchain. Um, what we offer here is the ability to take uh, print the data that's being printed, data that's been scanned or read through RFID, and uh, we've really simplified that process of recording that onto a blockchain ledger and then being able to pull that data off of a blockchain ledger as well. So this is something that we, uh, uh, we've actually had quite a bit of interest and uptake from our partners as well. Blockchain is something a lot of companies are exploring, looking for opportunities, and they found that uh, it's a very complex uh, technology to work with. There's often high consulting fees, and uh, to easily tie in uh, the recording and reads from the blockchain through an API like this has been able to help companies really simplify their development. Um, and I think, you know, as Alex is going to go through some of our upcoming webinars, we're going to see uh, we have an upcoming webinar on blockchain uh, that we're really excited about. So Alex will dive into that in a little bit. So again, you, we've talked about going to Zebra's developer portal. Um, if you go and you go under the products, platforms, and uh, Savannah Data Services, you're able to see the APIs that we have out there. Uh, encourage folks, create an account, log in. Um, you can play around with these. You can uh, get your API keys to test them out. And uh, again, for some of the ones that are open, uh, that like mobile computer device health that uh, are not publicly visible. If you are interested and would like access, please just reach out to us and we're happy to uh, get more of an audience out there to test that and start pulling data. Uh, registering for the developer portal is very simple. It's on Zebra's single sign-on. So if you've registered for our partner portal or zebra.com, it's tied in with that same login. Very simple process for someone to be able to use. Um, all right, I think those are the, the kind of the overviews of what I wanted to do in terms of the products, but we've also talked a lot about feedback and the feedback is really critical for us in this data services space. This is something we're building out for our software community and we wanna make sure we have all, we're offering up the best data services that are meeting your needs. And you know we've talked about getting feedback through the questions here, but one other method that we're using uh, that we have up on that portal is once you have a, an account, you're able to start giving feedback with the broader community through our sandbox. And in this sandbox, we kind of have three different layers. So one is ideas, where we're having people send those in. Um, and then we have the concepts and prototypes. So you will see these different layers within our sandbox. In here, uh, in the ideas section, you can submit your ideas. They do go through an approval process and we're able to put those up. And then we give people the ability to vote on these. So as we start seeing um, more interest in ideas, that informs what our roadmap is going to be and what we're working on developing. So we encourage people to do that. Then as we move things forward, we go through those phases. And you know, once we get something that's um, a little more mature into the sandbox, we have functional APIs. And again, we're looking for people to use those and give us feedback on that functionality of whether they see value in it and whether they would be interested in having us fully productize that so they can roll that into a production environment. Um, so this is a great opportunity for engagement. 
we're definitely looking forward to uh, working with this broader community here and uh, you know, really appreciate you know, all the feedback we have already gotten uh, through this. So I, I think that's all I have in terms of the sandbox. Um, you know, really excited here about barcode intelligence, the offering we have there, the enrichment that we can do, the you know the identification, decode, and enrichment. And if you have any uh, any ideas, any additional data sources, please let us know. Great, thanks, Dan. Uh, that was a great uh, view from Ben before Dan and then Dan. Um, so just as we come to the last couple of slides here, uh, just a reminder, pop any questions you've got into the tab on the right. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, now we've got Dan and uh, and Ben both still on the line. Um, also, interestingly, uh, when we ran the last poll on this webinar, I think around 60% uh, of people had registered on the developer portal so as dan was saying you know great first step after this webinar is uh, get yourselves over to the dev portal uh, the link will be in this deck uh, you can also find the exact uh, api that we've been going through here barcode intelligence uh, get yourself registered and as dan was saying you know the api uh, and the dev portal as a whole is designed to be very self-service so you'll see on there various other use cases, uh, some of which uh, Ben went through on the Barcode Intelligence API, as well as uh, the other APIs. There's various uh, uh, help guides on the dev portal. There's information around testing, around pricing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a great first step after the webinar is uh, get yourselves over to the dev portal. Any specific questions that you think of after the webinar, uh, Myself, Dan, and Ben's details are on the slide here. Uh, just a final couple of slides to go through um, before we see if there's any questions here. Uh, you'll see this slide on all of our webinar series. So um, we're taking, obviously, significant precautions and offering a lot of support to our partners around coronavirus in terms of updates um, and guidance. And the webinar series itself, if you haven't seen it, uh, get yourselves over to the Partner Gateway page. There's the whole series uh, on that uh, page. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so if you just go to the Partner Gateway page and go over to Events, and then you'll see specifically this uh, larger webinar series. Specifically on the Savannah side, as Dan mentioned, this was our second webinar in the series. So this will be recorded, or this has been recorded, and the presentation will be put onto the Partner Gateway. And now we're rolling into our third webinar coming up, which is on the 5th of May. And that will be on blockchain traceability, which Dan touched on uh, earlier on. On this webinar, uh, we're excited to have a great guest speaker on uh, from one of our partners in the blockchain space. So be sure to register for that and, uh, uh, and we'll look forward to having you there. So with that, uh, we'll just give it uh, another minute or so. And any questions, like I said, great opportunity to to ask them to uh, to Dan and Ben uh, whilst we have them here. Yeah, I just I just like to kind of highlight, you know, on the uh, blockchain uh, talk we do have. Uh, as Alex said, it's a, a company, IOTA, it's a leader in the blockchain space, and they're going to be speaking about some of the use cases that they're seeing within the enterprise space and adoption that they've had. Um, and so it's, it's a great opportunity to learn from some of the experts uh, within blockchain um, on how people are using it and the value and benefits they're seeing out of it. Exactly. All right, so there aren't any questions that I can see in the Q&A box, so hopefully that means that uh, you learn a bit from this webinar. Uh, like I said, recording and the presentation will go onto the Partner Gateway, get yourselves onto the Dev Portal, get yourselves onto the Sandbox part of the Dev Portal. Any submissions, as Dan mentioned, uh, are more than welcome, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone, for joining.